The city of Xi'an, Shanxi Province, has been completely sealed off since December 23, 2021, due to another COVID-19 outbreak, with 13 million residents being strictly confined to their homes. Now, more than 10 days have passed, and many residents are in dire straits due to food shortages. Residents of the same building have started bartering for vegetables and rice in exchange for cell phones, computers, cigarettes, and alcohol. There were also patients who passed away due to the lack of timely treatment. This is a stark contrast to the communities where the officials live with abundant supplies. Many people believe that Xi'an these days mirror Wuhan from 2020. In this video, the official's family member is showing off how much food they are getting. <laughs> However, such rigid restrictions and prevention measures did not stop the spread of the virus. As of 9 a.m. on January 4th, the number of infected cases in Xi'an was 2,435, an increase of 2,292 cases from the initial city closure. On January 1st, the CCP took even more absurd measures to prevent the spread. According to instructions from Vice Premier Sun Chunlan, Liu Guozhong, the party secretary of Shanxi Province, ordered that the cases in Xi'an must reach the goal of zero by January 4th. This is a part of their social clearance plan, which means that all residents in the risk areas will be moved to other places outside of Xi'an for centralized isolation, so that the remaining people will no longer be at risk of infection, thus achieving the goal of social clearance. Many videos and photos were released of large numbers of buses parked on designated neighborhood streets, with residents lining up to board. As soon as one person became infected, all residents in the same building were forcibly moved to a temporary isolation site outside of Xi'an to be quarantined. Residents of one neighborhood complained that they were notified at 2 a.m. and were forced to leave at 3, with no time to pack their belongings. Someone also photographed an old man on crutches getting on the transfer bus without any luggage. Some analysts believe that the authorities deliberately made these sudden arrangements to prevent people from having sufficient time to prepare. If they announce the move in advance, they are afraid that some people have the chance to escape. Some of the isolation sites are even unfinished public rental housing units with no heating. The rooms does not have a bed. And just a simple mattress on the concrete floor, with such poor accommodation and no guaranteed meals, even people with no illnesses may come down sick. And since many people live together, there is also a risk of mass infection. In the Zhuqie Wholesale Market in Chang'an District, Xi'an, there were confirmed cases, and all the staff were transferred to quarantine camps and isolated. Due to the confirmation of infected cases, 2,000 students from Xi'an Aviation College were sent in 46 buses to Shangluo City and Hanzhong City. They were isolated in an old and dilapidated facility. There was no water and no heating, and snow was flying outside. The students were suffering. Some cried and said they were really falling apart. Some people were freezing, and some were crying. The most important thing people wanted was to have basic food and clothing. What is even more infuriating is that some of the quarantine camps are just tunnels for traffic, with rows of bunk beds placed on them to become an isolation site. The video shows these people being placed in an underground garage for isolation. Many more were transported a hundred miles away and left on the streets unattended. They had to walk back on their own. Some residents also ran away to their homes because of the poor facilities in the isolation sites, but of course they may have been stopped by the police midway. Without prior notice, many residents were sent to the public housing in Xiangyanggou, Baqiao District, for centralized isolation. The video uploaded by netizens shows that there is only a small table and one wooden bed in the isolation room, and not even bedding was provided. After moving in, two loaves of bread, an egg, and a carton of milk were delivered at 11 a.m. on January 1st. But many of them were entire families, with elderly and children. A large number of residents of Panjiazhong in Yangta District, Xi'an, were taken away for isolation. In the meantime, 
a large number of mobile cabin hospitals are being built in Xi'an. On January 2nd, the field hospitals being built near the Samsung company in Xi'an was completed and ready for use. Not only are these people suffering, but those who have been sealed off from their homes are also unable to come and go freely, creating a series of human tragedies. A Xi'an resident living in a medium-risk area reported that his father had a heart attack at home and needed to be rushed to the hospital. But the hospital refused to admit him on the grounds that he was from the risk area. The phone number that could be called for help was either busy or no one picked up, which ultimately led to his father's death without any medical attention. One Twitter user reported a pregnant woman from Luoyang who went to Xi'an to work was detained in Xi'an and is about to give birth, but there was no one to take care of her and she has no money. The government did not allow her to leave, and no hospitals accepted her. She was afraid that both their lives may be lost. On the night of December 31st, a building fire broke out in Xi'an's Xinglong community, but the main gate was locked with metal wires, so firefighters had to jump over the gates to put out the fire. In Shangluo City, Shanxi province, supplies are transported by horse-drawn carts due to vehicle restrictions. One man in Yangta district, Xi'an, went out to buy buns because he was starving and came back only to get beaten up by the epidemic prevention officers, scattering the buns all over the ground. A video uploaded by a netizen shows a man who wanted to go out to buy something, but was stopped by the gatekeeper, who said he was not allowed to go out without a pass and doesn't care if he starves to death. On January 1st, the old lady had nothing to eat at home and wanted to go out to shop for food, but the police wouldn't let her go out. In some areas, the only thing to eat for isolated people at home is cabbage. A lot of residents who want to go out to buy food have gathered at the entrance of a courtyard community, but because the government has not approved it, they are not allowed to go out. Food is also not allowed to be delivered. The young man in the video was forced to go on TV to confess his guilt because he jumped over the wall to go out and buy food. There is also another article. A woman in the community was able to get supplies and started selling them after giving some gifts to the gatekeeper in the community. She received a complaint from another district for not supplying them with food, and the woman was later punished for crowd selling. Of course, there are many people who bragged online that they had received a lot of free food and that they were well provided for. But then it was discovered that the neighborhoods where these people lived were associated with government departments. Some netizens also photographed that supplies donated by the public were taken and sold off. On January 3rd, relief supplies were privately divided among officials in Xiabeiliang village, Chang'an district. The tight government control doesn't mean that all gatherings are prevented as mass nuclear acid testing is still required every day. There are reports that more than half of the infected people in Xi'an were infected during the nuclear acid testing process. Not only humans have to take nuclear acid tests, but animals are also no exception. Even though the people are having such a hard time, the officials are not forgetting to rub salt on the wound. A netizen posted that he saw a lot of vegetables being transported downstairs in his neighborhood, box by box. He initially thought that they were going to be distributed, but who would have thought that after taking some photos, 
they were all moved away. A flat city road where supplies can easily be transported by even the simplest cart was delivered by hand and even filmed by a professional camera crew to create positive publicity for the government. But this had the opposite effect, and the food delivery video was mocked by netizens. This topic has been trending, and officials had to clarify it twice, only to make it even more suspicious. This is another video filmed for publicity, and they were also singing songs praising the Communist Party. Even though he only got a bit of vegetables, this old man still knelt down and thanked the government. On December 31st, 2021, the government of Tianjiawan village in Yangta district gave free vegetables to migrant renters, allowing them to choose one of three options, three potatoes, three radishes, or one cabbage. In the early morning of January 4th, 2022, Residents of Nanchang village in Xi'an were short on supplies, and a large number of villagers lined up in the early morning just to get a packet of noodles. There are also communities recruiting volunteers, and the daily reward is a bowl of noodles and a sausage. Some say the job is getting tempting, because before, the only reward was a bowl of noodles. While most places in Europe and the United States have loosened restrictions, the CCP government still adheres to the radical zero-COVID policy. From the above epidemic prevention stories, it is not the virus that the CCP really wants to control, but the people and the society. Some netizens have said, I don't know if the virus is under control, but I do know that the people are really under control. The officials are only thinking about how to keep their official positions, and they couldn't care less whether the people have food to eat.